What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. Today, we are discussing Love is Blind Season 7, DC Episode 7, okay? A lot happened in this episode, so we're going to get right into it. But before we do, please do not forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you're made aware every time I post a new video. So let's get right into this episode, okay? So as Episode 7 opens up, the couples are still in Cabo, and everyone seems to be in a lovey-dovey mood. And we also see that Nick and Hannah might have done some soul-searching. Sometimes. I can be a little selfish. I should probably think twice before I say it. Yeah, I think I'm you? realizing I need to work on being less bitchy sometimes. A little bitchy's good. Yeah, but I can work on being kind of decent sometimes. So today, all of the couples are going on little individual dates. We see Marissa and Ramsey's, and they go on a yacht date. And being on the boat makes Marissa feel like she's right back at home because we all know she was in the Navy, and that is going to come up later. They share a little smooch, and this was the first time that I looked at them, and I was like... Okay, I kind of see it. I kind of see it. I don't know if it was just because of the scenery and because they were matching, but the kiss, the kiss was giving. The kiss was giving. Next, we see Tim and Alex, and it looks like they're going to try to work things out. I knew he was upset, but I didn't know the extent of how upset he was until he spoke on it. I, I am more than willing to like keep exploring this because I see that she kind of can understand where I'm coming from. So as of now, they're still in separate rooms, but they're each saying that they love each other and they still want to bring the other to meet their families and they still want to continue the process. We really don't know what happens. I honestly think that they might have the footage and they're just saving it for the reunion, but I guess we'll see. I also heard that the couples get a little bit of extra shmoney if they make it to the altar, so that would explain a lot. Next, we see Ashley and Tyler and they go on a little camel ride date and they're still confirming how much they cannot wait to get married to each other. Ashley says that she can marry Tyler today because she knows she will never, ever, ever, ever find another man as good as him. Woo child. Then we see them go to eat and as they're eating, they start discussing the holidays and what it would look like in their household. And Ashley says that she wants to create her own traditions. And she also mentions kids. Family, holidays. Yes. What's that look like? She wants me to have like, kids and stuff. Like last year I stayed home for Christmas. I cooked a big meal for myself. That's again. so funny. I, how about I do the same thing? Now, if you've seen my last video and you've been on Twitter and the tickety talk, you already know what's going on with Tyler, okay? And if you haven't seen it and you don't know, this might be a spoiler. So, giving you time to skip ahead, okay? Okay, but during this scene, I said, um, Tyler, she mentioned kids. That would have been a great time to bring up yours. Yeah? Yeah. Ashley here thinking that she cooking dinner for a family of three. Meanwhile, she needs to be cooking for a family of six. Now with the Tyler thing, I did hear that it is like a sperm donor type of situation. I keep hearing different things and I can't keep up with it. Then I don't know what's what. So for now, let's get back to the show. So next we see Nick and Hannah and they go bungee jumping. I would so do this. I really would. It looks like fun. And I'm happy that Hannah actually did it because honestly, I was worried that she was going to say, I'm too grown to bungee jump, but she didn't. She was a good sport today. Child, next we see Monica express some concerns with Steven. Napod. I remember you specifically telling me, like, we're together, like, I'm gonna get you flowers. The actions matching up with the words, right? You're right, you're right. And I was using that as a uh, concept. Like, it wouldn't be flowers. It's about, it's just about making me feel special. Yeah. Now, I had to watch this scene with fair eyes, okay? Y'all already know I do not see it for Monica. I don't, I don't, I don't, but I had to be fair. Steven, if when you were trying to get her, you said, I'm gonna buy you flowers, Take your ass to the store and buy those flowers, even if it's for Monica, <laughs> okay? And then we see Steven make a gift suggestion. I know I don't have to get you something top quality, like a Kate Spade bag. So, so something like a YSL bag. I, you leave time? I don't even know what that is. Now listen, if Monica is used to YSL, Gucci, Louis V, I am not in the business of telling her to downgrade her lifestyle to be with Steven. I'm not. And that does seem to be a theme for the women on Love is Blind. A lot of times they are more established than these guys. And then they're called materialistic and different names because they would like someone to meet them on the same level. I'm not gonna do that. And if Steven feels like YSL, Louis V, Gucci, all the things are in his budget and it's something that he would want to get for Monica, he can do that. But if he's not able to do that, Monica needs to understand she cannot badger him for gifts. And on top of that, what will always give me a bad vibe about Monica is the way that she communicates. It's always snobbish, it's always condescending, and it's always in this complaining tone. Oh, why don't you get this for me? Oh, I want this. Oh, it's like annoying. But Steven does admit that he has dropped the ball in certain areas pertaining to things that he said he would do when they were in the pods. See, now, if I was Monica, I wouldn't have said anything about the flowers. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna sit back. I'm just gonna sit back and wait. 
and watch and see if you're going to do all the things you said you were going to do. I don't want flowers because I've been bothering you about the flowers. I want to see if you were lying in the pause because if you bring me flowers, it's only going to be because I was annoying you. I want to know if you're naturally that romantic guy that you claim that you were and it doesn't seem like Steven is. I just sit back and watch for two weeks and then I go buy myself some flowers and when he sees it, oh, you got flowers? Yeah, because you said you were going to get me flowers in the pods and it ain't happened. But that's just me. <laughs> and Steven also says that because of the way he grew up, they didn't really exchange gifts in his family. Gift giving has never been a big thing to him. Okay, that's fair. But again, if you sold the image of you being a gift giver, a flower giver, a huge romantic, you have to deliver on that. Or it comes off as if you were a liar. Overall, this conversation really showed that these two aren't really financially compatible or maybe they have different spending habits. And that is something that uh, they shouldn't be together at all. But if they do want to be together, this is going to be a huge point of contention for the both of them. But I just got to say this. Imagine, right, if these two stay together and they have a little housewarming slash Christmas party, right? And all of Monica's family and friends are there and they're all opening gifts, child. And Monica opens her gift and it's a Kate Spade bag. <laughs> I would pay to see that. Do you hear me? And as we get further along in this conversation, Steven says that this process is a lot and he doesn't want to feel like he's being forced into doing something. And baby, Monica starts glitching. If something I'm having second thoughts, the next thing you know. Are you like, I'm so no, confused, I'm literally. Not. I'm so confused. I'm not. You are, it's okay. You're saying things like second, like what, what the fuck? And you're not looking me in the eyes. Yeah, I know, because I'm trying to think. Um, I'm just nervous. Because it's a huge, huge commitment. You, like day one, were like, I'm in love with you. I'm gonna marry you. I wanna be with you, okay? Listen, listen. No, I thought you were like about to cry. Are you no, I mean, you're right. Stop. Oh my God. So let me just say, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching. But let me just let you know, when I usually watch Love is Blind every single season, there's usually a woman. There's usually a woman who I like to take under my wing and protect. And in this scene, I felt like Steven might be the first man that I need to take under my wing on this show. <laughs> He was on the brink of tears. I don't care what he says. He was on the brink of tears and Monica is just going and going and going. And I am fully aware that some people do use tears as a form of manipulation. I am so aware of that, trust me. But I didn't get that vibe from this scene. I felt like Steven was being genuine and not wanting to disappoint Monica. I feel like he does wanna be with her and he does wanna give her all the things that she wants. Maybe he can't do that, I don't know. But Monica, just because you made it out of the pods, doesn't mean that it's guaranteed that y'all are gonna get married. You're still in the process. Yes, he might have said that he was 100% in the pods and then y'all came out the pods and look how you act and I wouldn't wanna marry you either. I don't know if they didn't fully explain the process to her, but the way that she's acting, it's like she thought that making it out of the pods is a 100% guarantee that y'all are gonna get married and that is not the case. Now Monica got me feeling bad for a man who said black girl headband, girl. <laughs> So next we see Tim and Alex and they're on an ATV date. While on the date, they ride over a bridge and they both agree that this bridge symbolizes a new beginning for them. And Alex is so happy when Tim tells her that he will be returning to their shared room. See, I know y'all discussed what happened, but did y'all also discuss what changes you're gonna make in the way that y'all communicate? Did y'all discuss that? Because that is the root of this issue. Y'all talk to each other crazy, y'all are toxic. And if y'all don't figure that out, y'all gonna run out of bridges to drive over. Okay, so now it's time for another group dinner and everyone is filling in each other on what's been going on, what's the tea? We see Hannah telling the ladies that she teaches Nick everything and maybe one day he'll teach her something. Alex is telling the ladies about the night that Tim left and she says that she just knew that if she didn't stop him, she would never see him again. Then out of nowhere, fireworks start going off. It's really beautiful. Some of the couples are cuddled up. We see Nick rubbing on Hannah's booty, okay. And like clockwork, here comes Monica to piss me off. That was so romantic. So romantic out there. Thank you so much for the romance. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was, oh my God, I'm so sorry. romantic. <laughs> Holding all the other people together. I was, I was talking with Gary. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. So, I want to say, this is funny, it's not like a because then everything seems busy. So Monica is upset because she feels like her and Steven missed what would have been a romantic moment if he came over to her during the fireworks. Okay, I get that, but at the same time, girl, what's wrong with you? So we see her cut Steven off in the middle of his conversation to do that passive aggressive, oh my God, that was so romantic. What a romantic moment. Oh, thank you. Oh my, ooh, girl, if you have something to say, just say it. And then she goes over to the table and she cuts the ladies off while they were in the middle of a conversation. Just rude and self-centered AF. But she tells the ladies that she's upset that Steven didn't watch the fireworks with her. And she also tells them that everything he does pisses her off. Like I said in my last review, Monica, there is a way to say things. And she's at the table telling the ladies, oh my God, he's so scared of me. He's so effing afraid of me. I'm not playing with him. Girl, ain't nobody scared of you. <laughs> 
Well, well, Stephen was a little scared because he did come over to the table offering her water and stuff like that. And she's like, oh, yeah, thank you. I'll take it. So Stephen starts explaining to Monica that he was having a very deep conversation with Garrett. And he says that it would have been rude to stop his conversation with Garrett to come over to her and watch the fireworks. Um, what? As much as I don't like her, Monica is your fiance. If she wanted to watch fireworks with you, Garrett can wait. Go stand by your lady and watch those fireworks, okay? Even Monica the Witch comes before Garrett. One thing that I noticed that I absolutely hate, I did not like when Steven was speaking and Monica kept looking at Taylor and rolling her eyes. Very rude. And why would you try to belittle your partner in front of your friends? But I will say, when Steven started speaking, I was lost. <laughs> I was lost. I had to replay that scene like two times because I'm like, what? What is he trying to say? And if this is how he speaks, I can understand Monica saying, okay, boy, shut up. <laughs> but again, there's a way to say it. But Steven, what the hell were you talking about? If you make it on the show, you're going to ha eventually have people confronting you. People out there that are like, I don't give a f what your situation is. I want to suck your f No, you're fine. What's happening? Well, we were talking- How did we get here? Well, what I gathered from what Steven was trying to say was that with the newfound fame that's gonna come with this show, women are just going to be falling over themselves to sleep with them, to do other things to them, and there's gonna be so much temptation. First of all, you assuming that women are just gonna wanna sleep with you because you are on Love is Blind, is laughable because you speak on it like it's a guarantee when it sounds like more of a hope and a wish. And another thing, why are y'all having that conversation right now? You're on your honeymoon with your fiance and you're having a conversation about other women wanting to bop you off. And just like that, boop, Steven, you have been removed from under my wing because what are you even talking about right now? All right, so that's over with. And now the couples are discussing going back to DC and getting into the real world. We see Steven packing and Monica is like, oh, can you just pack in the morning and come lay with me until I fall asleep? I think I understand Monica's idea of what a partner is. I think that Monica feels like a partner is someone who gives her kisses on command and compliments her and brings her slippers and brings her water. But a partner to her is also someone who she thinks she's better than, right? A partner to her is someone who isn't allowed to talk more than she deems is necessary. Someone who she can talk down to, someone who she doesn't have to be kind to. Monica said that in the past, she's dated more established men, right? And that's been her main focus. I feel like the reason why those relationships don't work out is because Monica needs to be with someone who she feels like she's better than. I feel like this is where she thinks she thrives. And she definitely thinks that she's better than Steven. Make no mistakes about it. I don't even know if Monica would even be able to function with someone who she sees on the same level as or on a higher level than her. And on top of that, she seems to be completely oblivious on the way that she speaks to Steven. I am sure that in this moment, if someone asked her, hey, if you were Steven, would you marry you? She would say, hell yeah. I'm an absolute joy to be around. Who wouldn't want to marry me? That is what she would say. So anyways, we see the couples, they're finally back in DC with 21 days until the wedding and they're all arriving, okay? They get their phones back and now it's time for them to meet the families and integrate their lives. We get a clip of Nick and Hannah. Uh, just watch. I'm younger than you. Ain't I more mature than you? You think you're more mature than me? <laughs> I'm more emotionally this, intelligent. This brings up a and intelligent. Any man on TV? No. So Hannah thinks that she's more mature, more emotionally intelligent, and just intelligent overall than Nick because she knows when to take out the trash and how to mount a TV. I just paid to get three TVs mounted, boo. Are you calling me unintelligent, Hannah? And that is very rich coming from Hannah when she is notably the most immature person on this cast. But Nick is being a good sport again. He is still sparing Hannah. And he says, okay, I'm just gonna ignore what you just said. No, I can't mount a TV, but I will help with other household things. I do laundry, I cook, I clean. Clean. I want to be an equal partner in this household. And then we hear Hannah say, oh, it's my way or the highway. And I'm like, oh my God, Hannah, what a great display of your emotional intelligence and maturity. Thank you for that. Next, we see Monica and Steven, and she still has these flowers on the brain. Oh, we're really hosting. Funny. We're going to buy flowers, wine, beer, flowers, more flowers, flowers. More flowers. Like, like white roses. I love cotton flowers. I dream does. I love all flowers. As much as this lady irritates me, Steven, if you said he's gonna buy her flowers, just buy her the damn flowers, please. Because now it is looking like you did sell her a dream in the pods. But at the same time, Monica, I think that you sold Steven a dream as well because I'm sure you weren't this unbearable in the pods. And I'm gonna call out my own bias because I know that if I liked Monica, I would be dragging Steven over these flowers. I would. 
I would. I know. I know I would. If I liked Monica, I would be getting in Steven ass over these flowers, okay? But Monica, nagging Steven about these flowers is not the way that you're gonna get them. And I also believe deep down in my soul that even when and if Steven gives her flowers, she's gonna have a complaint about something else. So next we see Garrett and Taylor, and since they have their phones back, they decided to go through each other's social media. It's very uneventful. Garrett's social media is full of fish because he says that he does a lot of spare fishing. How sweet and innocent. And we didn't get to see Taylor's phone, so it was a really short scene. Anyways, next we see Tim and Alex, and she wants to cuddle, and he doesn't really want to because he says that he sweats in his sleep. Next we see Tyler and Ashley, they're praying before bed again, and he gets really emotional when he starts praying for their families. And I'm like, oh my God, Tyler. He must be thinking about his children. That is so sweet. Aww. Next we see Marissa and Ramses and they're talking wedding plans. And Marissa says that she wants a black themed wedding. I actually like the idea. I went to a all black wedding, actually like a, maybe two months ago, we were all in black and the bride and groom were in white. It was cute. I love wearing black. If you can't tell, that's my, that's my color to wear. I think it would be cute. Marissa says that she thinks that Ramses will be a bridezilla and he's like, you mean like a groomzilla? But he low key agrees with her and then he says, don't try me. And I was like, oh, besties, besties. <laughs> So child, next we see Garrett bring Taylor to meet the family. They give her a very warm welcome and they give her a flower as well. And I'm like, damn, Monica, you should have got with Garrett. You would have got your flowers. One of Garrett's family members lets us know that Taylor's family wants absolutely nothing to do with this process. And she says that the problem is they really don't want people in their house. They don't want cameramen in their house with their dirty ass shoes, okay? But she does say that they understand how important this entire journey is for her. And they are finding a way for Garrett to meet them in person. So we see the family ask Taylor about her job and they approve and Garrett also lets them know that she got her degree from Johns Hopkins and they're also impressed with that. The two of them speak about their similarities like their tattoos and everything that made them fall in love with each other and how they immediately bonded in the pods. Everything is going cool but Garrett's mom does start to get emotional about this expedited timeline. It's such a big life decision. I don't want him hurt and I'd hate to say you be hurt. I adore my son. Yeah and we will grow to love you too. Oh, I hate this. You, I feel like you have deadlines and you're trying to meet those deadlines. Yeah. When I tell you that Taylor really did a great job at letting this family know that she totally understands their reservations while still reassuring them that she absolutely loves Garrett and isn't pressuring him into doing anything that he doesn't want to do. You can literally see Garrett's mom breathe a sigh of relief in this scene as she's speaking. And Garrett's just sitting there smiling like, yeah, that's my girl. She great. She's great. Listen, if that was a job interview, she would have gotten hired. <laughs> I would have hired her. Now, I don't know if she's going to show her ass later when she get the job, but on the interview, she did well. Next, we see Marissa come home from work or school or something, and she meets Ramses in the kitchen cooking, and this is heaven for her because remember in the pause, Marissa said that she would like if he would be a house husband, okay? But he worked from home today, so he had some extra time, so he started cooking. Love that. I love that, Ramses. Beautiful. And Marissa's like, don't I look good just standing here watching you cook? And he's like, yes. She does offer to help. And he's like, no, I don't need no help. You could chill there. And she's like, oh, thank God, because I didn't want to cook. <laughs> we also learn that she is unwilling to move because the commute would have been too far. And she says that if Ramses' job wasn't so flexible and he could work from anywhere, this wouldn't work out. So they start speaking about their wedding again. And Marissa has some requirements. A religious, sufficient. I don't want a man marrying us. She needs to be a female. No cis, heteros. Yeah, Anything that's fine. else is <laughs> Spiritual, I guess. God can take a backseat. My mom, she's still very Christian. Ramses says that his mom would not like if there's no mention of God at their wedding. But Ramses, didn't you say that you broke away from Christianity enough for you to get divorced, right? So I think that that is something that your mom would have to respect. If you're on a spiritual journey of your own and maybe you don't align with certain beliefs anymore, she has to respect that as well. And then the two of them have a deeper conversation about religion and what's caused them to deviate from their religion. I can definitely understand being born into a particular religion and then growing up, learning more about yourself, asking questions, seeking understanding, and then adjusting. I totally understand that. And I do think that it's beautiful that the two of them connect on that aspect. Ramses was looking at Marissa with so much love. This was kind of like the calm before the storm. Well, I think it was love. I can be completely wrong. For all I know, Ramses could be sitting there like, oh my God, these noodles that I just cooked is about to send me to the bathroom and I don't want to ruin the moment. But I'm going to make myself believe that it's a look of love. Then we get into this military conversation. As we know, Marissa served in the Navy, okay? And she says that she used to be super patriotic. She says that she does not support what the military does in other countries. And Ramses 
Ramses says that even though he wasn't born in America, he is grateful to be here, but he will always voice his opinion about how America has destabilized other countries. And then they have a back and forth because Marissa is saying that being in the military is a nuanced experience and you just have to follow orders. You have no control of what you're allowed to do and not to do. And she says that a lot of times people in other countries are harmed. And Ramses is like, okay, girl, you weren't drafted. Was there a draft that I missed? You signed up to be in the military. You know what it entails. That's a hard thing because that requires me to realize like, yeah, while I was on the Navy ship, while I didn't push a button to shoot off a missile, I supported operations that did people. The military did. Yeah, I know. Like, then all of that's not there for no reason. I know you don't like my military service. And child Marissa says that now she feels judged and uncomfy. During this entire scene, I'm sitting here like, why didn't y'all talk about this in the pods? I understand Ramsey's reservations, but in all honesty, I was kind of shocked during this conversation because it's not like Marissa hasn't been screaming from the rooftops in the pods that she was in the military. So if this was such a huge issue for you, why did you keep dating her in the pods after finding out that she was military? And Marissa, did you not ask Ramses how he felt about the military when y'all were in the pods? What the hell do y'all be in these pods talking about? And did y'all even speak about this on the honeymoons or were y'all just too busy sucking each other's face off? Marissa says that she grew up on army bases since she was two. The military has been a part of her life for her entire life. And she says that she can't be in a relationship if she is going to be shamed for her service. And she takes great pride in it. And she said that she actually had considered joining the reserves. And Ramses says that if she was in the reserves, he wouldn't be with her. And this conversation does not end on a good note at all. And I'm just thinking, I cannot wait for Ramses to meet Marissa's family because it seems like she has a military family. How is that gonna go? And then I'm also thinking, is Ramses just looking for a reason to dump Marissa because where is this coming from? You knew she was military before and it didn't seem like you had such strong feeling towards it, but all of a sudden you do. So I don't know y'all, that's where the episode ends. Leave me all your thoughts and comments down below. Again, we are only less than 200 subscribers away from hitting 27K. Y'all have been liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you all so, 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 so much. I appreciate y'all and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.